Shipping military equipment might seem like a mystery to many. There are certain standards and procedures to send these giants overseas and this is not without cost. The shipment of tanks is a crucial matter since it relates to national security. For this reason, the US government has perfected the logistics processes for military material. It is one of their best qualities. They really have the ability to transport any item within a few hours to any location. The majority of supplies to and from American installations as well as conflict zones are under the authority of the Defense Department's logistics headquarters. Transporting tanks, however, is a little different than transporting any officer's personal belongings. Welcome to another episode brought to you by High Technology. If you're new to the channel, be part of us by subscribing so you won't miss any future contents. As of today, come and explore with us everything you need to know about transporting tanks and armored vehicles. Shipment of a tank is like a strategic game where you need to plan who your players are and how you line them up. A tank rumbling along the street is extremely unlikely to be seen. Instead, it is transported from one place to another using a tank transporter. A big tractor unit and corresponding semi-trailer are combined to form a tank transporter. Track vehicles, rails, and drivetrains endure less wear thanks to the usage of tank transporters. Additionally, they reduce fuel consumption and road surface damage. Ramps are used to help the tank board the transporter. Tilt beds may also be employed occasionally. Tank transporters are now used which saves time and money. No tanks have been damaged and all roads are secure. One of the workhorses of the American military, the C-5 Galaxy, is essential for transporting large armaments and artillery, including these M109A6 Paladin howitzers. These large massive weapons each measure 10 feet wide by 30 feet long and weigh around 27 and a half tons. Although two of these enormous weapons might easily fit within the small cargo compartment of the C-5, Doing so would be a difficult undertaking. To maneuver the driver backward into the cargo area where it can be secured for safe transportation, several personnel must work together. It is a strategic airlifter as the name suggests. A modified nose cone of this large-scale military transport vessel may open and close to allow for rapid loading and unloading. Its enormous cargo hold measuring 121 feet long and 19 feet broad has storage space for up to 31,000 cubic feet. It may be simpler to load certain types of cargo, particularly pallets. When they have larger objects such as boats, helicopters, or other items, they can load them more easily from the back in the truck bed mode, which is when the aircraft has a particular feature that allows people to kneel. The aircraft will virtually descend to the ground, allowing for the loading of heavier cargo, such as the four helicopters through the front. The aircraft can travel at speeds of more than 500 miles per hour while carrying up to 200 81,000 pounds in bulk. The Galaxy has been a part of US military logistics since it was initially established in the 1970s, but it still plays a crucial role today. The M1 Abrams tank can only be carried by a select few aircraft worldwide, including the C5. The C5 Galaxy has frequently been used to transport non-military things due to its outstanding carrying capabilities. These highly specialized weapons of war weigh more than 60 tons and have a length of about 32 feet. The AEHF-5 or Advanced Extreme High Frequency Communication Satellite is one such. In addition to being big and heavy, these highly developed satellites also include sensitive equipment that needs to be handled with extreme caution. Only six of them have been constructed, and only five are still in use today. The James Webb Space Telescope was relocated from Houston to LAX in 2018 using the C5 Galaxy. Recently, this cutting-edge telescope made history by capturing some of the most intricate and sophisticated imagery of our universe ever taken. However, without the C5's incredible strength, moving the 13,000 pound piece of machinery would never have been conceivable. The C5 is not the US military's most adaptable cargo jet despite its considerable size. The C-17 Globemaster would have to hold that distinction. The C-17 can carry payloads of up to 170,000 pounds despite being around 100 100 feet shorter and having a substantially smaller cargo area. The C-17 was able to travel anywhere
anywhere in the world thanks to its air refueling capability and strategic transport from theater to theater rather than tactical bouncing from spot to spot within theater. Therefore, the CH-53K can be moved in this case from a new river all the way to Berlin. Although it is undoubtedly considerably more cramped than the C5, it can nonetheless transport a M1 Abrams tank that is fully loaded. Here you can see how carefully ground crews fasten the tank to the cargo bay. This keeps such a large weight from changing while the aircraft is in flight, which would impair the pilot's ability to steer safely. The fact that the C-17 can take off from considerably more modest and remote airfields is more significant. It can transport tanks like this to the front lines of practically any prospective conflict since it can land on runways that are only 3,500 feet long. The C-17 is coveted for a variety of reasons, including its capacity to drop anything from over 100 paratroopers to jeeps, armored vehicles, and Humvees at low altitudes and high speeds. Payloads are typically pushed out of the back cargo door mid-flight. Each item has a parachute attached to it that opens automatically and is packed on top of a pallet. This guarantees that as soon as the pallet is free of the aircraft, the chute will release and deliver the product safely to the ground. Usually, there are three pilots on board, with two load masters in the back taking care of the rigging and weight balancing, as well as ensuring everything is secure and that the drops proceed according to schedule. They are also present to handle any backup equipment needed to complete the drops. By launching an 85,000 pound giant test vehicle for more than 25,000 feet, the C-17 broke a world record. The achievement was noteworthy because the C-17 typically only carries out airdrops with weights up to 60,000 pounds. In actuality, the airplane needed to have its structural integrity preserved, which required numerous specific considerations. As a frontline transport aircraft, the C-17 is also required to carry a vast array of vehicles to and from different points. Mine-resistant ambush-protected vehicles, sometimes known as MRAPs, are among the most frequently observed cargo items on board aircraft. These large trucks are built expressly to survive ambushes by homemade explosives. MRAPs can readily drive themselves into a C-17 cargo bay despite their maximum weight of 18 tons. But how do ground crews load these enormous freight jets with stuff that can't just move itself? The Halverson loader steps in at this point. This is a mechanical lift platform that can be quickly deployed and can move up to 25,000 pounds of freight at once. In 2001, the first Halverson loader entered operation. It can move at up to 17 miles per hour and has a turning diameter of 50 feet. The loader can move freight up to 18 feet in the air when utilized as a lift. The Air Force even created a unique obstacle course for its ground troops to practice on because proper Halverson and loader operation is crucial to military logistics operations. There are few events in the Air Force that compare to the Air Mobility Rodeo. The activities that the ground crews and the air crews do during this speed competition includes loading, unloading, and airdrops. This is also a multi-capable airman event where they have maintenance staff. The objective is to display each participating unit's capabilities while identifying ways to enhance processes over time. It helps them to have the community or teams much smaller when they go to these places and everyone can do what everyone is doing, which is a significant issue in logistics. So they have troops and ground trans workers who truly learn what is being done. In this instance, the crew is flying a C-130 over Dice Air Force Base in Texas as quickly as safety will allow, hauling various equipment including Humvees. In the end, high-performance cargo aircraft like the C-130, C-17, and C-5 are essential for the US military to operate. These these big lifters are adaptable, strong, and most importantly, quick. There is no faster way to move tanks, soldiers, and heavy artillery from one location to another, even when they are fully laden. Let me end this episode with the fact that unlike today's gender equality and female empowerment movements, tanks in World War I had distinct gender roles. British tanks during World War I were initially divided into males and females, with male tanks having cannons and female tanks having heavy machine guns. That's it for today's video. Video, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this content, please don't forget to like and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can always get to watch more incredible videos like this. This has been High Technology, serving you the best and cutting edge contents on the highest form of technology available on the planet. Until then, see you.